believe the same thing who just won't say it that way. They believe it, they just won't say it. Instead, they'll do a sort of General Haig kind of discussion of it, the way Al Haig talks, sort of in State Department ease, full of lots of ING words and coinages that are not found in the English language that, you know, just cover over the real situation. When what Al Haig really wants to say is, I'm in charge and the dark little people will die. <laughs> That's the message. And it's right and good that they should die because they will die so that everyone can be free in a new world order and right on, let's go get them, kick butt, drop bombs, they die, don't talk, kill. So like, it's like a proposal for surrender, a proposal for surrender as follows. You surrender or we bomb you while you sit there, but of course if you get up to leave, we will bomb you while you're walking away. Is that a good policy? See, that's almost Nietzschean, isn't it? Surrender, but don't move. Of course, if you don't move, you won't have surrendered. So we'll have to bomb you. But if you move, we won't be sure you've surrendered, so we'll have to bomb you. So surrender, but we'll bomb you. It's kind of a policy designed to do what? Bomb people. They can go, don't, but it won't help because they'll either have to be still or moving or some condition in between. Again, it'd be better openly to say, now that we've got this thing going, we're all good Christians, we want to do the right thing, and we're all believers in good democracy, but for the moment, let's forget it. This is too much fun. Let's really hammer them. And let's prove that our version of the Peloponnesian War, the one that made the Greeks so confused about their values, in our culture, we had a war like that that confused us about our values, Vietnam. And it's, it's kind of a background theme of the current war, of a philosophy of the present, to which I'm now connecting the discourse of Nietzsche loosely. A target might be to kill the guilt and the fear that were produced by that other troubling moment in history. Nothing would do that better than a clean kill with a huge majority for it, a quick clean kill. What better basis on which to build a new world order than, a, than an order of barbarism. I mean, you know, th than this massively quick and effective barbarism, which would accomplish what should be openly stated as a public goal of the war, namely to prove that the peace love hippies were wrong and Rambo was right, and that is that in that earlier war, if only we would have just kept bombing and hit them with everything we had, those damn peaceniks and those newspaper guys and all those bleeding hearts wouldn't have lost the war for us. Well, if we can go in now and show that massive force continually applied will bring this country to its knees, it'll be a way to demonstrate that that could have been done before. That all those people that raised all that hell were even, even more wrong than they've already admitted. Good God, even more sold out than they're already sold. It's like the New World Order can't tolerate even a little, just a little bit of opposition. And that may be true of it. Because it is a, I don't know if it's Nietzsche's view, but it's mine, that systems of power connected to systems of value tend to spread and become total. In other words, they tend to want to fill up the total field of discourse within which we discuss the moral. This is well known about religions as we, I mean, helps to account for religious wars. The principle of toleration is not built into people who have that kind of insight into the truth. That's why I wanted to begin, I did begin these lectures by discussing fallibilism, not as some deep philosophical principle, but as the following principle, that it's okay to have beliefs, but suspect your own beliefs that it's important to believe some things passionately, but it's also important to have the wisdom to know that you could be dead wrong. So, using Nietzsche to bring up this critique of some of the values that have come out of the so-called Christian tradition, I realized that I could be wrong, Nietzsche could be wrong, but all these arguments and, and, and from him and the, one, the suggestions I've made during this hour are meant to do, or to suggest a kind of suspicion of that tradition. Now, Nietzsche does say what is the powerful, one of the powerful motivations behind Christianity, 
which is, I, I've argued, is deeply connected to the current world system. One of its powerful motivations is it does speak to something that's very important, and, and human beings may, in fact, quite generally share it, and that's the need for love. Christianity is a sort of lyrical religion in that respect. It speaks of love. And it's hard not to know that it fudges the distinction between the earthly and the carnal kind. It fudges that distinction. I don't know how many of you have ever been to an ev evangelical meeting out in the country, but that's the night when all the men and women get dressed up in their best clothes and go and sing these rousing songs and sweat in their best perfume and sing Love Lifted Me, and it's very difficult not to see Nietzsche's point that Christianity has always been a find for those who have repressed sexuality. It's quite a find. It always has been. So I, I, all I can do is suggest you read more Nietzsche. Uh, in a cynical time like this, it's hardly necessary. Most of you are probably already that cynical anyway. Maybe this was a waste of time. But I wanted, I wanted to add to the economic and political conditions what might be called cultural conditions, of which religion remains an important one. And so the discussion of Nietzsche fits there. And also it fits because it's still a project for some and a quite serious one. So now that I've presented Nietzsche's rather cynical view, uh, in the next one I'll discuss Kierkegaard's view. But the problem with this is that Christianity, as I've already argued, in a modern society is already a very, idios very idiosyncratic project. Very idiosyncratic. I know that because I've, I've been a faculty in residence and lived with students at a university and had them come in and complain my roommate's a real sky pilot, by which they mean he reads the Bible a lot and irritates them. And it, that's an easier way to get rid of a roommate than coming in and saying he's a Nazi. Because it, the Nazi will just put up some, some swastikas in the room and use some words you don't like. The other guy will be up prying and irritating you all night. <laughs> but the, the Christianity I've been discussing here is not Christianity in the intimate sense of faith that I'll discuss with, when I do briefly discuss Kierkegaard, another critic of modern times, but that Christianity that has become a public religion, about which I guess the briefest Nietzschean critique would be that it's hokum as a public religion. It is important to politics. Harry Truman, I think, is, is quoted as saying that in our system, to run for political office, you have to pour God and Jesus over everything like ketchup over your food. It's just got to be covered up in it. Now, Carter was a different story. Someone said I had to say something about Jimmy Carter. In any, in any course on ethics, you've got to talk about Jimmy Carter. Uh, and all I can say about Jimmy is he's a good Christian, but he did admit that he lusted in his heart after other women. If he had had courage enough, he would have been Ted Kennedy. <laughs> and if Ted Kennedy had had the courage of Nietzsche, he would have said, yeah, I did it, and I liked it, and you would have too, <laughs> if you'd have been there. Which is probably true. Don't you see? I'm not really trying to be cynical here. It's probably right. Nietzsche isn't trying to be just cynical to irritate you folks. I mean, that's probably right. Yes, you know, if you're rich, good-looking, and lots of people, yeah, sure, why not? So there's like a distinction there. There's sort of Kennedy, Carter, and then way down at the end of the spectrum is Richard Nixon. Is it almost question time? I, I really don't know what other nasty things to say about folks. 